Hey everybody, so today we will show you how to install the Raptor style grill and lettering kit from bpfabricating.com onto our 2007 Toyota Tacoma. And if you enjoy this video, please be sure to comment, like, and share it, as well as subscribe to my channel. This kit fits 2005 to 2011 Tacoma models, and they have a similar kit for the 2012 and newer model. For the letters across the grill, we're going with Toyota, but you can order any other letter that you would like. And be sure to check in the description of this video to see the link to bulletprooffabricating.com. They sell skid plates, lift kits, and other very cool accessories for Toyota trucks, so definitely check out their website. And the first step in this installation process is to remove the stock grill from your vehicle. To remove your grill, there's just two plastic tabs on each side that you can use flathead screwdrivers to pop out. And then towards the center, there's a Phillips head screw on each side. Now that all the screws and tabs are out, you can just wiggle the grill and pull it straight up to remove it. Now that the grill is off the truck, the first step is to separate the chrome from the black plastic. The reason why we're going to separate it is because when we go to paint it, we don't have to worry about taping up all the chrome. And to separate the chrome from the black, you'll see a bunch of tabs running along the rear. And this should be identical to the newer model Tacoma as well. We're just going to pry those up so we can separate it. So for the next step, what we need to do is basically cut out this whole center section because this whole outer rim is what's going to make the frame for the new grill to sit on. So we have to cut off each of these pieces as well as right in here. For the cutting of all this plastic, we'll be using an oscillating saw with a kind of triangle shaped blade. That way we'll have much more control than any other kind of saw to cut all these out. And be sure to check out the description of this video to see the entire time-lapse video of this whole project. That way you can see everything that we're doing. And with the final cuts, we can now just easily pull out the top. And there you go. There's no going back from here. And now this whole centerpiece you're going to want to save because we will be using parts of the plastic, especially this lower flat piece to fill in the huge holes here. So now the next step is to file down all these little nubs that are left. And we'll be using the same oscillating tool. We just now have a thinner blade on it. For the fine-tuned sanding, we're finding that the Dremel tool is actually working the best. You can see how much cleaner this side is looking now. I finished up using this tool and I've gone around this whole side and this whole side. It's kind of hard to get to here just because of the size of the tool. But I used it a little bit just to cut a small slot just to weaken that edge. And now I can kind of do that. <laughs> so now here's this whole piece off. And now just like we did with all the other sides, we're just going to go with the Dremel tool. Sand everything nice and smooth inside and out. So now we're done with the initial cutting. All those are nice and smoothed out, and both the triangles on each side are nice. So now the next step is to bring in that centerpiece that I told you to save for later, and we will use it to fill the giant holes in the grill. We now have both of these pieces out, you can get a better idea of where they came from. Basically just that lower piece right there. So we now have taken this whole piece, and right here are the pieces that you will turn that into. So each of these pieces are going to fill in this hole, just like that. And these two thin strips are going to be first epoxied on the back side. That way, each of these pieces kind of have something to be glued to. We now have all four of these pieces cut out and ready to go. So this is the epoxy that we're using. It's a pretty good plastic weld. Now we're going to use the rectangle pieces and go ahead and adhere them on here. And we'll be adhering them to the back side right there, there, and there. So now we're done with all the epoxy for right now. So now you can see what we've built up. 
And now the next step is to do all the Bondo work. We'll be filling in all these gaps with the Bondo. And we're also going to fill in the Bondo on the rear side, like right down in here. Because the actual grill does have a natural curve, and you can see how that's not perfectly flush right now. So if we fill in the Bondo inside now, we'll be able to, once it's all dry, to sand it all nice and smooth. This is the Bondo we're using that we just picked up from Advance Auto. Comes with a filler and the hardener. And then we're going to use 80 grid sandpaper and basically rough up the entire surface of the actual grill first. So we finished up the sanding, roughened it up a nice bit. Now we're going to use just a piece of cardboard as our table, I guess, to mix the Bondo. So here's coat number one of the Bondo. So far it's looking pretty good. And we did the back side a good amount as well. And once these sides dry, we'll come back and then sand it nice and smooth and then do one coat along the whole grill. That way we can fix all these spots where we cut. And then we'll sand that part. So we just finished up all the major sanding for these side pieces and it's coming along very nicely. This whole edge is very smooth feeling. We're now completely done with all the Bondo and sanding. And this was actually our first time ever using Bondo and it came out absolutely perfect. All of the seams are completely smooth and really nice. And the first bit of sanding we used 80 grit sandpaper. And then after about three coats of the Bondo, we switched over to the 220 grit sandpaper. That way we could get everything very smooth. And one thing about this entire build, if you have a multi-tool, like an oscillator tool like this, and a Dremel, this whole process will be very easy. We finished up all the tape work for the paint prep. And we went ahead and taped up all these little slots. That way when the chrome is reattached to this black piece, the thickness that the paint will add won't affect anything. So we just finished up all of the paint. And we removed all of the tape that we had up. And for the paint, we just used some Rust-Oleum primer and then Duplicolor gloss black and then the clear coat. So to reattach the chrome piece to that new painted piece, we're going to be putting the epoxy, the same stuff we've been using earlier, on all the little tabs. So we finished all the epoxy, the chrome and this black piece are all nice and adhered together. But now we're going to work on doing the corner pieces of the mesh. With that piece cut out, you can now see it fits nicely on there. We're just going to give it kind of a natural bend, just a little bit, because this does have a bend to it. And that's basically how it's going to sit. And you can see the curve that this piece now has in it. That way it fits nicely on there. Alright, with the first layer of caulking down, you want to, again, watch this line right here and line it straight with this one right here. And just be careful, you don't want any caulking to get on the inside. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and just put another one, kind of to squish it all in together. That way it adheres nicely. We're just finishing up doing these side pieces. All the caulking is just hardening up right now. And when you're doing these metal pieces, really take your time to bend them so they fit nicely on the plastic. That'll make your life a lot easier when you're gluing them. So now the next step is to actually adhere the main grill portion. And the way we will be doing this, we're going to use these drywall anchors. And basically just, some of them we might sand a little bit on the side so it's flat. And the piece is just going to go on the edge there in uh, different locations. We have to figure that out right now and there'll be epoxy there and then the screw will go through the mesh and then into the anchor. And so now we need to mark the spots for the anchors to go and what you want to do, you want to look straight down through each grill hole and just mark a good spot where the anchor will go that way it lines up perfectly with an opening. We're working on the anchors right now I already have two adhering right now and what we're doing with these anchors, we're using the Dremel tool and we're just sanding the side of them. You can see how that side, the upper portion is flat. That way with the epoxy, we can easily just stick it right on. So we finished up with all the anchors. They're nicely epoxy to the side there. And what we're going to do, we have about an inch and a half long screw that we'll be using in all the corners. And then we've taken washers and trimmed them so they'll fit. That way when the mesh is on, this washer will act to disperse some of that pressure because this is an aluminum grill and we don't want anything to just rip through. 
we just finished up putting four of the anchors in so you can see the washer and the screw and you can see the raises in it and then all the paint came out very nicely we used the gloss black so it looks really good and now the next step is to adhere all the letters so now we have the grill at a nice level surface and we're going to go ahead and test fit all the letters and just kind of loosely place them where they're going to be. That way we can get an idea of where exactly each letter will go. We finished up with all the tape lines, that way we know how each letter will be left and right. And then we're going to use the top and the bottom of the actual indention in the grill for our up and down reference. So then for each letter along the back side, I'll just be using normal 3M adhesive. I'll be using the hair dryer to heat it up nicely. And for the T, I'll just put a strip this way and then this way. And then I'll go ahead and adhere onto the grill. Alright, and that is a letter adhered. And a little tip for when you're adhering each of these letters, use the actual mesh to help you make everything level. So if you can see on the T, this fourth row right here is perfectly level below the top part, part of the T. So then we're basically just going to use the fourth row across all the letters except the Y to make sure everything is perfectly up and down. We just finished up doing all the letters and each letter is within one millimeter of being perfectly straight and centered. And it actually took us just about 45 minutes to lay them all down. We definitely had to take our time to get them perfect. And once again, don't forget to check out the description to see the time-lapse video of this entire build. It will be very interesting to watch. And now the last step is to put the grill back on the truck and see how it looks. Now that the grill is done, we went ahead and reinstalled it onto the truck. And it definitely looks very cool. So overall, this really isn't a hard project to do. It just takes a little bit of time. You just have to be very detailed in what you're doing. But it's definitely very doable and it makes your truck look very unique. So definitely check out bpfabricating.com to order this product along with other very cool items on their website. So thank you all for watching and please be sure to subscribe to our channel.